fists only, no weapons or magic. Hands up. Let's do this. I'm going to take you down. So that's how you want to play. Oh no you don't. So that's how it's done. Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryeni, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, -E and you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's up guys, it's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 137 now guys. I've picked out 5 new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. So let's just jump straight into it. Starting off at our number 5 spot we have the My Home mod. Now the mod page reads that this is a humble abode for you to live in, right next to the Riverwood Bridge. There's actually a lot of different home mods that feature this location. It's perfect if you roleplay as a native citizen of Skyrim, and it would surely make sense that you have a home if you are. Now some information about the house it's itself is it's specialized for when playing as a priest class, but will work great even if you're not. There's also five new support spells that have been added and can be found inside, along with armor and weapons that can be found inside to start you up as a priest. The house is also fully equipped for crafting whatever you specialize in, and it's fully nav meshed on the inside and out. There's also safe container storage and NPC idol markers that have been added inside for follower immersion. Only vanilla items have been used, hence the small file size, and it's safe to install and remove at any time. The two known incompatible mods are Welcome to Riverwood and Cato's Riverwood. So as you can see as I'm walking around the house there's tons of decorations in a small area and that's pretty much one of my favorite parts about a house mod is a house mod that has everything in one location instead of having to go from door to door and having to watch through a bunch of loading screens in order to get to where you want to go. I like having everything in one area and it's very nicely decorated so everything fits together perfectly and on the outside you have your smelter as well as a place to sit and fish if you would like to and I just really think it comes together perfectly, especially if you're playing as a priest class or if you just want to settle down in Riverwood. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number 5 spot, so I'd recommend downloading the My Home mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have a very silly mod that I find to be absolutely amazing. It's called Jurassic Skyrim. And the mod page reads that in a world where playable characters are virtually the smallest things in existence and everything else is huge, your job is to survive amongst giants. The only problem is everything is giant. There's no dependencies either, so it should work alongside any other mod, and it makes it so that all playable characters are 25% smaller, and everything else is 2 to 10 times larger. Now just by hearing that, you may think that this mod is absolutely crazy, and you are 100% correct. Everything being absolutely giant is probably one of the funniest things I've seen in Skyrim in a while, especially if you have other mods such as Whiterun Hunter's Paradise, which adds a whole bunch of different animals outside of Whiterun that just constantly fight each other. There'll be giant bears, there'll be giant giants, there'll be giant mammoths, giant wolves, and one of my favorite parts about the mod is that since it makes all the playable characters 25% smaller and the horses are going to be a lot bigger, that means if you ride a horse you're going to be extremely tiny as well as the horse which is going to be just absolutely massive. And I think that was the funniest thing I probably saw about this mod. And just by seeing this gameplay right here you probably realize that this is going to make for a very very different playthrough. So if you decide to install this mod and give it a try, I'd recommend to see how far you can actually get with everything being so giant. And you can also add along different difficulty enhancers to make the game just insanely difficult to beat these giant creatures and just have huge boss battles with things that, you know, you may not have had trouble with before. Say maybe you never struggled to defeat a pack of wolves, now you definitely will because they are huge and their power attacks can be massive. So if you are looking to drastically change your Skyrim and have an entirely new experience and feel like you're playing an entirely new game, then this is definitely the mod for you. And I do like this mod enough and I think it's funny enough to feature in a separate video so if you guys do want to see a separate video of me covering just this mod and doing a little bit of a playthrough like maybe one episode of it then let me know in the comment section below I would love to do a separate video focusing on this mod and just showing all the funny moments that can happen with everything being so huge so yeah definitely let me know in the comment section below if you want to see another video of this sometimes it's great to just take a break from the seriousness of Skyrim and step back and just add a whole bunch of silly mods and just have a blast while doing so and that's definitely why Jurassic Skyrim comes in at our number four spot, so I'd recommend downloading it and giving it a try. 
Coming in at our number three spot, we have the Gizmodian Oblivion Weapons for Skyrim. Now, the mod page reads that these are random resources originally made for Oblivion. Some have been ported backward for Morrowind, and these are now ported forward and available for use in Skyrim. Now, you can find these weapons in the Drunken Huntsman in Whiterun, directly to the left of the entrance on the cellar counter in a small yellow urn near a pair of boots. And that's basically the gist of the entire mod. It adds a whole bunch of new weapons into the game from Oblivion that have been made for Oblivion, and I think that's great that they upgrade and just move weapons over and these weapons are extremely unique as well. Out of all the weapon mods that I've ever covered, a lot of them try to fit with the lore and do all that type of stuff and make it seem extremely realistic, while Oblivion had more of a fantasy feel and it didn't have to go along those guidelines. It didn't have to feel like it was real, you know? And adding these Gizmodian weapons into the game, you have a whole bunch of new colorful weapons that are extremely unique, whether it be their shape or their colors. There are so many new ways to take down your enemies and clear out a bunch of bandit camps and caves and do all your questing. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number three spot, so if you have 83.49 megabytes left on your load order, I'd recommend downloading this mod and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the Fancy Bows mod. Now the mod page reads that all bows have the same damage as vanilla bows, but generally faster. And the slowest bows, such as Acid and Blood bows, have a speed of 0.75, which is equal to the vanilla Dragonbone bow. All of these bows can be enchanted, and you can now make them at the Forge, if you have the appropriate perks. There's the Ember bow, the Fire bow, the Lava bow, the Glacial bow, the Winter bow, the Emerald bow, there's also Ruby, Sapphire, Acid, and Blood. You can also make a greater version of each bow except for the acid and blood bow, but you need the dragon armor perk to do that. The stats of the greater bows is equal to the vanilla dragon bone bow. So I'm going to head over to one of my favorite bandit camps and clear it out using all of these bows just so you can see exactly what they look like and how they work in game. So I think that almost every single one of these bows looks absolutely amazing and depending on your preference you can choose exactly what type of bow you want to have. And I really love the animation on all of the bows as well as how colorful most of them are. So combining fancy bows with Gizmodi and Oblivion weapons you'll have one of the greatest and most colorful and unique arsenals that you'll ever imagine. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at a number two spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Fancy Bows mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Better Vampire NPCs mod. Now this mod improves all of the generic and named NPCs in the game. It does not require the Better Vampires mod, but it can be used with any other vampire overhaul without conflict. But if you use another NPC mod, it's best to load this mod after it so that the changes take effect. It's also important to note that any mods which change the appearance of NPC vampires should be loaded after this mod, because this mod makes no appearance changes to all of the NPCs, it's just fighting, inventory, and abilities of them. The vampires in this mod will spawn according to your level and have different spells and unpredictable AIs. They also have varied armor according to their class and level, and even special weapons that you haven't seen before. Some vampires will turn into a mist when they are low on health, and some will use a blink attack to teleport beside or behind you. Vampire weapons can infect you with the vampire disease, and unique classes of vampires attack differently. All of the armor and weapons that you may find on these new vampires have new tempo recipes so you can improve them if you wish. Vampires also scale and level and power with you all the way from level 1 to 130, and some named vampires can go even higher. Many of the abilities also scale with the vampire level, so be prepared to put up more of a fight at higher levels. Vampires can also drop vampires' blood gems upon death, or if you're a vampire yourself, you can craft them if you have a 25 in enchanting and 25 of alchemy, using a common soul gem and blood potions. These vampires' blood gems can be smelted into blood glass ingots, which can then be used to craft new blood glass weapons. You must have the glass smithing perk in order to make blood glass weapons, and they are slightly less powerful than daedric weapons, but have added effects that are independent of any of the enchantments you may add. The blood glass weapons have a rare chance on each strike to reduce enemy damage output for 10 seconds, reduce enemy stamina, magicka, and health rates for 10 seconds, or reduce the enemy movement speed and attack speed for 10 seconds. They also have a chance to absorb health and very rarely kill an enemy and infect them with a blood plague which can spread to others nearby. And you can also kill a bleeding out enemy to absorb their life force and have a chance of recharging your enchanted weapon. Now whenever you first start out this mod, you'll be given one vampire's blood gem. To customize the mod, go into sneak mode and then use the blood gem in your inventory. Now I think this mod is great not only because it has a huge overhaul of how the vampires look in the game and how everything acts and the new weapons that have been added, but it can run alongside all of the other vampire overhauls that you may be running as well. Say you have another vampire overhaul that you really like and don't want to give it up for this one, you can actually add this alongside it and have one of the greatest vampire overhauls that you could possibly think of. And with a combination like that, I feel like vampires will get a lot more attention in the game now and that's definitely 
why this mod comes in at our number one spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Better Vampire NPCs mod. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.